Hello, everybody. Is my mic actually picking up? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Okay, good. I'm still trying to figure out the the nuances of this new desk setup because I've been rearranging my studio and everything is strange and different. There we go. Just moved my mic slightly. Hopefully this works. Okay. And now there's a cord in my face. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. No, no, don't do that. Okay. So today I am working on Age of Night, chapter 23, page 14. We penciled most of this page uh, two weeks ago now. I missed last week's live stream because I had no power <laughs> and no internet all last weekend. We had like a massive snowstorm here in Maine on uh, Thursday night and all day Friday. We lost power Thursday night and did not get it back until Monday, close to lunchtime. So it was it was a thing. But now I finally have power and internet and all those wonderful things and I can share it with you again. It was not a fun time, not looking to repeat that anytime soon. All right, so to start off with, I'm gonna start working with some of my tools to get some of these more geometric lines, the straight lines, the more architectural curves that need to be pretty regular. So I'm gonna line up, that lighting's a little harsh, let's back that off a little. There we go. All right, I'm going to line up my French curve with part of the curve here and start getting some of these put in place. So remember with a French curve, you just do as much of the curve as you can match up at one time and then reposition it and do the rest later. But you wanna let that dry first so that you don't drag your tool through it and make a big inky mess. And you always want to clean your tool between strokes so that you also don't make a big inky mess. You don't want to do that. Line this up again and try to find a good curve here. That looks good. This is just an arched doorway, so the bottom of that should actually be straight. I hope everybody else had a better weekend last week than I did. <laughs> All right. So while I've got the French curve out and I'm doing curves, I'm basically just gonna move all the way across each tier of the page and do as much as I can with it on each pass because it's going to take several passes to get all the different angles and not make a mess. So I'm going to try to do part of this bell here. Mm, trying to find the right spot. Hmm. Yeah, I can't get in there without smudging some of this. So that I'll have to just come back to. We'll move down here. And do part of this doorway. There we go. And 
I also have plenty of things I need to use my straight edge for in this image. So I'm gonna do some of them, not so much up here where all of this is still wet, but wherever I can get away with it without dragging it through some wet ink. So we'll go through this little straight line over here. I'm gonna do this straight line down here that needs to be inked. There we go. And actually, I can probably go ahead and do these straight lines on the pavers down here too. All right, so that's the first pass of tools on here, but we're gonna give all of that a minute to dry before I go back over and try to do another pass because even if it looks pretty dry, a lot of times as soon as you bring that, <laughs> bring that tool into that, into that area, it just bleh, makes a huge mess. So what I like to try to do is find an area on the image where I don't have a lot of tool work to do to kind of work on some of the inking for so that I am not gonna like be having to work around whatever I'm doing there too while I'm waiting for different inked parts to dry. That's kind of a challenge with this page. Most of it is gonna be brushwork. Ow. Most of it's gonna be brushwork that isn't the stuff that I'm doing with the tools here, so. Hmm, I think I can probably work up in this corner some. Because some of this stuff I should be able to. Get some of this rope in here. Some of that rope texture on there. And we'll do some of this back here. I think I might need to put my reading glasses on. I always start these streams and then I forget that I can't have my face like three inches from the paper because there's a camera in the way and that, oh yeah, also I'm an old lady and I need reading glasses. I'm not that old, I just need reading glasses. I need reading glasses because this is what I do for a living. I probably wouldn't need reading glasses if I didn't do so much close work all the time. Between doing artwork for a living and then my, my very fancy leopard print reading glasses. Um, If I didn't do this for a living and then have hobbies like sewing and other things where you need to look at itty bitty things, then maybe I wouldn't need reading glasses. But, oh well. Uh, let's see, where's the best match for this curve? So now I'm gonna go ahead and do another pass on my tools. go. This is going to have to be this part. There's those. I'm 
and try to get this part of the bell up here. Okay, now before I do the other, oops, scoot this up. Before I do the other half of this arch, I'm gonna come in with my straight edge real quick and get this roof line. Just draw that straight across, connect that corner there. Now the other half of this doorway. There we go. Oh, I see there's a comment, but I can't see it from here. Hold on, let me try to see that better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. So the comment, the comment was, is it more awkward to draw on camera or does it not make any difference? Um, it's a little more awkward. It's partially like I have to be conscious of things like where this camera is and not hit it with my head, which I have a hard time doing. Um, so that does make it a little more awkward. I also just have to like remember that there are people watching me and I have to keep talking to them so that I'm not super boring. Um, but on the other hand, it's actually kind of, it can also be kind of useful because I have to just focus and work for an hour. <laughs> I can't like pull out my phone and start scrolling through Instagram <laughs> instead of, or Twitter, instead of, uh, you know, working on this like I'm supposed to be. So that's good. So let's be real. We all are subject to distractions on, on occasion. Oh, there's some more ground over here. I need it to fill in. Well, maybe I can get the other angle too. I think I can. I'm out of frame. <laughs> And yes, I have to be conscientious about things like remaining in frame uh, because my desk is much bigger than the space that you can see here. And so I'll just start getting into working on a little corner of it and not realize that I'm down out of frame where no one can see me. That's not very good content. You can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm just kind of cleaning my pen out, trying to make sure that I get in that little, inside the little groove there. So my pen doesn't get all gunky and continues to have ink flow through it nicely. All right, that up top there is still a wee bit wet. So we're gonna work over here some more while we let this panel dry before I come back over. like stuff all over this. Okay. Keep these shapes on this rope nice and flowing.
Get some of this rope texture in here. There we go. Oh, I didn't do the ones up here. Whoops. Didn't do the texture up here. Let's get in and get that done. Okay, so back up here, I'm gonna start this way so that I'm not going through Lined up here, get this door frame inked in. Whoops, scoot back up. Now I can't really get down on that side so much. We gotta be careful about working around that side. Let me see if I can get maybe some of this stuff. Hang on, I gotta turn the page around to get the right angle here. There we go. Whoops. Need some more ink on there. I say as if I don't do stuff like that all the time. Lower part of the page, that's pretty much it for tools. I don't know, I will have one more thing to do. I realize. because I am still going to need to do a circle template. For okay, but for right now, we can start working on doing some more of the nib inking in these bottom two tiers, because at this point, I've gotten all the stuff I need a straight edge and a French curve for in these lower two tiers. Most of it is ultimately still some nib inking I can do in here, so. We'll go ahead and work on some of that. I have random stray hair on my page. Doesn't even actually look like one of mine. I don't know where it came from. Probably belongs to one of my children. So we get some of these little details here. Some of the shading on here. Shading and texture. Let's 
some texture on the wood. That moonlight is coming from behind, so it's actually going to be kind of dark in the middle there. Turn that so it's at a more natural angle for my hand here. There we go. That's good. And then over here in the background, these mountains, this mountain slope here is going to mostly just be kind of like this big black mass, but I want to have a couple of the ridges defined. And oh, I hope Doug's watching. My buddy Doug Shute of Victory Condition Gaming. Because scumbling is his favorite thing. That's what you call this technique. Where you basically just make controlled little scribbles. And use those for building up tone and texture. It's called scumbling. I don't know why this is like his favorite thing in the world. <laughs> when I scumble. So you hear that, Doug, if you're out there watching? This is for you. This is for you, buddy. Scumble this part a little bit darker. This part a little bit lighter. I'm gonna build that texture up. Just kind of do like one pass where I just kind of put the initial light texture down and then I kind of come in the back, figure out where the where the darkest edge is gonna be and build that up really dark. And then kind of fill in the middle so that it all blends together nicely. There we go. And then all this, the little X, is the reminder of, hey, don't forget to fill this with black. Well, it's technically a convention that is really used more for assembly line type comic page making, where the penciler actually, instead of filling an area with pencil and wasting their time, they would mark an X in an area that they intended the inker to ink all in black. But... It's one of those things that since I learned it, I find it useful for myself to do, even though I'm going to come back in a week and ink this in brush. Uh, it's, it's just helpful to remind me. Like an X, I don't have anywhere where it's something conspicuous. It's something that's easy to look at and be like, oh yeah, that's not part of the drawing. That is clearly a message to myself. And that is, don't forget to put ink here. So partially it's just a force of habit, but from learning it in art school and partially it is actually a really useful note to self type tool. Somebody has another question and dang it, I my current setup, I can't read it from here. I have to move slightly to see it. So I will look at your question and or comment person in just a moment. As soon as I'm done scumbling this little slope here. I'm still refining this whole new setup because I can't read comments for crap from over here. Maybe it's just my eyesight. <laughs> I think it's just a, not at a good angle for the display. I can't see it. Give me just a second. Fill that space in. All right, 
And also the one thing with scumbling that you will have happen more than pretty much any other inking tech nib inking technique is you do scar up the paper a lot more and you do tend to get a few more fibers. So you have to clean your pen a little more frequently to get those fibers out. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it was just a comment of it was, it was just a comment of, hello, looking good, and thank you. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for joining me, and thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying this so far. Come on. There we go. So, lighter tone on the edge here. I have to say one thing with this particular chapter that I'm working on is that since most of it takes place outside at night, there's just a ton of spot blacks, which actually has made producing this chapter go a lot faster, which is good. It's nice to give myself a little bit of a break every once in a while. Like all of those exterior shots, if you go back through and if you look at the pages that are up online so far, or if you look th back through the last few weeks of working on these pages on the live streams, you'll see that there are a lot of exterior shots where I do a lot of the, I have a bunch of little buildings, of like just a lot of spot black because it's nighttime, which kind of makes up for all of the wide architectural shots, which keep happening in this chapter because this chapter is very unusual as far as the storytelling flow, where everything's happening all like things are happening in lots of different places in one big place. So everything's taking place in this temple complex. There's lots of different buildings in the temple complex. And as you're kind of like jumping between the different parts of the action, because they're kind of happening concurrently, then I have to keep like kind of visually guiding you through the temple. <laughs> so you know where we're going. So you know who we're going to and you kind of have a sense for how all of these different, things that are happening or playing off each other. That's the idea anyway. Am I being successful in it? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Go through and read it and you you tell me how successful I am. I think I'm doing okay, but I wrote it, so I'm not the best judge of it. Because clearly, I know what's going on. I'm not the person to ask if it's coming across clearly or not. Someone who didn't write it and didn't read the script is someone who would have to tell me whether it's working or not. Trying to get these pavers outside at the same time as the other stuff going on inside this building. I don't know if you just heard one of my chicks going crazy in the background. The chicks are still in my studio. They're still living with me for probably only another day or two at this point. They're actually really big at this point. And they're about big enough where I'm going to kick them out and make them go live with the big chickens. But my little bantam chicks have been my little studio companions for over, well, for about a month now. So they're, they've got real feathers and they're way bigger than when I first got them. They're still pretty small because they're bantams. They're never going to get that big. But they're outgrowing the cardboard Amazon box that I have them in. <laughs> it's one of the big Amazon boxes, not like the little A3 box. But, you know, it's a, it's a big Amazon box. The P4 Amazon box. I looked over at it. Um, but yeah, they're outgrowing it. <laughs> it is kind of nice having them in here and peacefully cheap, cheap, cheaping in the background, but they're getting too big. They've got to go live with the big chickens eventually. Okay, so I did some more of the tool work up in this corner. I see there's another comment. Let me go look at that.
Okay, so, so the question. The question was from somebody who is interested in starting a webcomic and they are not sure about doing it traditionally, um, where they just post a page or doing something more like webtoons. So what I do is I do work traditionally. This is uploaded on my webcomic and I upload a new page every week. Now, mind you, it is, <laughs> it is not a very swift way to advance the story. It takes a very long time for the story to advance this way. Um, a million years ago, early in the days of my webcomic, I did two pages a week. Um, but now that I have children and <laughs> now that I have children and I also have a lot of other freelance work and everything, doing two pages a week is just not, has not been feasible for a very long time for me. Um, so the story moves kind of slowly, but I like doing it this way. I like working traditionally. I like uploading a page of week because a week because it's very consistent. And then I always have to be producing that one page. I have to be keeping up with it. Um, but also recognize that there's a very good possibility when you write something longer form that way. And then only upload it one page at a time. As opposed to doing like a, a an episode or whatever like they do on Webtoons or a bunch of other different bunch of other different services where you do essentially several pages worth of content in a single upload. Um, you may not be getting the same consistent number of like weekly hits of people checking it every week because they know that they're not getting as much story when you only upload one page. And so a lot of the people that I talk to, they're like, oh yeah, I read your comic, but I only read it like once every like three months or something. And then I go through and I catch up on the last three months worth of pages, which is totally fine because they're still reading it and they're still theoretically buying the books at some point or whatever else. And that's cool. Like that's all cool. Um, but it's just, you know, it might change the way people are consuming your work and with what kind of frequency. Ultimately, it's really just a matter of what works best for your production as well. Like what works best into your personal ability to produce pages. So I don't actually make one page a week either. Like what I do is, as you can see, I'm working on this one page over the course of several weeks as I'm doing it on the stream. But what I do is I actually work in batches of three to four pages where I'll pencil three or four pages and then I'll go through and I'll letter them all, then I'll ink them all, and then I'll up, I'll scan them all in and clean them. But I still upload them one week at a time. It just It's just easier to produce them in that way for me anyway, it's easier for me to process them in a batch like that, to get through them in a batch. Um, so, I mean, could I possibly move over to like a Webtoons type model? I mean, maybe, but I've been updating my comic this way for like a million years. And also I am a little bit older and <laughs> remember ye old web comic, early web comic days where that's what everybody did was just upload one new page a week or two new pages a week or a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or what have you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really a matter of, of your own preference. The structure of your story part of this too is that my story doesn't come in, like my story isn't written in like seven page bites. You know, like some stories are written in a way where that works better. We're like having having like seven to 10 pages at a time totally works for them or whatever. You know, th somewhere in the in a smaller page range is actually doable because it's like a it's like a scene or whatever. My story has always been written to be consumed long form. So each chapter is like 20 to 30 pages. And individual scenes, sorry, I just had to switch what I was doing and I had to think for a second there. My brain like totally, <laughs> my brain just stalled out for a moment. Um, so each individual scene in one of those 20 to 30 page chapters could be anywhere from one to like six pages but they're not like the individual scenes are not usually longer than that. And sometimes they're very, very short, but they fit into the flow of a longer chapter because it's really written not as much to be a webcomic. It's, 
it's written to be a graphic novel and divided up into chapters. And I just upload it as a web comic so that people can see it. <laughs> like, I upload it as a web comic to have a schedule that I have to be accountable for and keep me on a good production schedule. And also so that people can read it and they can read it all over the world. And I don't have to travel all over the world to every comic convention for people to be able to see it. And it's just, it's out there and it's available. And then hopefully they decide they like it and they buy the book and they read it in the way that it is meant to be read. Um, I basically had never set out to do a web comic. It just kind of turned out that way. Um, whereas stuff that's written for the webtoons format is, is intended to be writ written and read that way. I think since that's like a thing. And so depending on the shape of your story, depending on your personal like preference as far as how you produce artwork, it, it re really depends on which method you should go with, I guess, is the very short version of my extremely long answer to that. <laughs> so I just babble while I'm inking here. This is the, the scrime on the edge. Trademark, my trademark swamp scrime, because this building... This whole building complex is like on the edge of the swamp, of the on the edge of the swamp, so everything just gets this kind of like grodiness to it. Because such is life on in a wet area. I'll make that just a little bit darker. Not quite as dark as I want it yet. All right, how are we doing on time? 38 minutes, okay. Usually keep these to about an hour. I'm gonna do just a few little guidelines here so that my hatching lines don't go all Caddy won't piss on me. Pretty much at least have this panel, all the nib work done on it in just a minute here. Keep all this going in a way that works with the perspective of this panel. in more of this space here. We're getting there. All of these uh, nib ink inking techniques are kind of slow moving, but I like the effect that they give and they're kind of, it's kind of zen. You can kind of just zone out and hatch away.
so close, so close. There we go. Okay, that wall is done. I'm just gonna do a little, little something in here because I don't want it to be white, white, especially not with everything else being super dark. Just needs to have a little tone to it. Cause like, yes, there's light inside the building, but it's not like blindingly white. There we go. Cool. All right. I see there's another couple of comments. Give me just a second. I'm coming. I'm going to go read them. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ooh, I love, I love this question. Okay. So the question was, do I have an ending in mind that I'm working toward and can I change it? <laughs> okay. Um, so I have more or less always known how the series was going to end and sometimes more, sometimes less because obviously as I write and as I, um, just, I've been working on this project for a ridiculously long time. So as I write and as I get older and I experience life more and my thoughts and feelings change about things and I just realize new things and all of that, you know, as I mature, uh, my thoughts about what I wanted to say with parts of the story have changed. And so that's not necessarily changed plot wise what's going to happen in the end that has really changed very little, but my focus on what I'm gonna say story-wise has kind of shifted over time. And I expect, since this still has several years to go before it's done, I expect we'll probably shift again, honestly. Um, it's entirely possible that in a couple more years when I actually have to write the ending that I'll be like, eh, I'm gonna shift focus a little bit. Um, but plot-wise, the what's going to happen at the end hasn't really changed. I have, um, I do have plotted out like how long the story is going to be. So it's planned to be five volumes. I have three released so far. Um, this is the beginning of volume four. So each volume is seven chapters plus like an interlude chapter. So I'm on chapter 23 out of a total of 35. So I'm getting close. I'm getting closer to the end. And the story is going to start ramping toward that kind of conclusion, like ramping toward the climax. In volume four, it's going to basic, volume four is basically going to be moving all the pieces toward the climax, which is volume five. Um, and I mean, yeah, since I'm not at volume five yet, I do still have some time and some wiggle room in the story to move stuff around, but I know where I'm aiming as of right now. So, and I really always have, like, I've always known more or less what's going to happen just because if you don't have that in mind and if you don't keep that in mind, that's how you end up with a story that goes on and on and on and then doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And then it just kind of ends and everything's bad and everyone's sad about it. <laughs> and I can't promise that the ending I have in mind is going to be amazing because that's all a matter of personal opinion, obviously. Um, but <laughs> I can promise that it's not going to come out of nowhere and make you sad because it makes no sense. <laughs> Let's see, and I'm gonna try to get this.
Let me try to get this. See if I can get any other little parts of this. Frustrating. That bell's going to take me forever to ink. Okay. So let's just move on to the only other thing I need a template for in the lower part of this page is that moon. So let me dig out my circle template. It's like right over here somewhere. But of course, it's under a stack of stuff, including a very large book because, because of course it is. Ugh. Okay. There's my circle template. Um, however, unlike these lovely tools that have this nice little edge to them with this nice little channel so that it keeps the edge of your tool from touching the actual edge of the plastic that's on the paper, these do not have that. These are very thin, flimsy, cheap little things. So, I don't use my uh, nib pen and dip pen for that. I just use a regular pit pen, the Faber-Castell pit pen. So, and the thing I love about these, it's India ink. It's nice and permanent and dark, but uh, you can find these suckers anywhere. <laughs> like, this is not a crazy specialty item. I have seen them in Walmart before, so. The lovely thing about these is that they're very readily available. It's not something you have to go to the ends of the earth to find. I mean, maybe now, but most of the time. Now everything's inconvenient for a while. All right, so we're going to get that outside. You can see how not circular my actual circle that I drew freehand was. And then this part right here. There we go. I, I wanted it framed around the head of his staff. I thought that was cool. All right. I see there's another comment. I'll look at that real quick and then come back over here. Oh, no, wait. I don't have a new comment. That's the same old comment. I'm, I'm smart. That was the same comment that was there previously. Okay. So what are, what are we at for time? We're at, oh, my goodness, almost 50 minutes already. All this tool inking takes a very long time. So we're gonna fill this in real quick. I hope that that was a sensible, a, like a, a comprehensible answer to the question about the ending. This, cause it's a, little tiny sliver of a moon. So this is all like the the dark side of the moon that you can see. Because it's a nice clear night. So we're gonna get this nice and dark with multiple layers of very closely finely hatched lines. Another, another layer here, because I'm trying to get this really dark. I think that that last, this last layer ought to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that looks good. Nice and dark and built up. And it looks a little um, ragged around the edges right now, but all of that around it is also going to be black. So it will look a lot smoother once that's inked over. All right, so down here, we've got this guy looking terrified because a seam is standing over him in his chieftain raiding regalia and looking just generally kind of terrifying. Most of this, since he's a figure, is going to be done in brush on next week's stream. But these little, like, geometric details I like to do with the pen. I also kind of want to do a, some kind of effect around him in the background. I don't want it to just be black around him. I like to do when, sometimes when you have, like, the... When I'm... Focusing on someone's reaction, I kind of like to do the little like vignette effect around them. Just kind of put something in the background without it being super distracting and just kind of like draw focus in on their face and their expression. So that's more or less where all that's going to be. And then I start building it up to go from darker to lighter. Keeping an eye on the time because we're getting toward the end here. Build this tone up. It's starting to build up nicely. And what time is it? Okay, so we've got like a little about four minutes left till we reach our hour. So it's time to do all the things to remind you of all the things. It's the, it's the things time in which I remind you that what I am working on is my web comic age of night. You can find it at age of night. That's a G E O F N I G H T.com. I upload a new comic page every Wednesday. This one will be uploaded in a few weeks. Question mark. I still have one more week of working on it on the stream. Um, and I don't remember. I think I just uploaded page nine online. So this will be online in like a month. Um, because I like to try to keep at least a little bit ahead. 
But you can catch that for free on my website every Wednesday. New comic page. Hooray. Um, however, if you would like to support my comic making efforts, you can also always follow me on Patreon and toss me a dollar or two a month and you will get to see all of the comic pages a week early. So if we're on page nine online, I think, then we're on page 10 on Patreon. So you're always a week ahead. Um, and you can also, depending on the tier that you're on, you get, can get free comics, you can get um, more behind the scenes peeks at stuff, uh, $2 a month and more. They also get to see pencils as they're done, like without anything else on them, just pencils, which is kind of cool. Plus other comic projects that I work on throughout the year, you get to watch that develop too and get copies of some of those comics, depending on your backer level and all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, also, if you just like watching these live streams and listening to me, blab and <laughs> babble on while I'm working and answer questions. You can uh, like this video so that other people will see it. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and make sure you hit the little bell thingy so that your phone or tablet or computer, or whatever you have set as your device that is paired with YouTube will let you know when I go live. It is usually on Saturday afternoons at this point, but I cannot promise that that will always be the case because life. So having the notification thing turned on is the best way to make sure that you don't miss when these live streams happen. So that's all cool and I'd appreciate it. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Age of Night. You can find me on Instagram at Amanda Call Art. Uh, I post other stuff than art on Instagram too. You'll probably see like pictures of my lunch and my kids and chickens and landscapes and whatever, but you know, that's, that's how this goes. Um, and what else? Oh yeah. I would tell you about cons that are coming up, but there are no cons coming up. There are no cons coming up. I have no events coming up. The only events are going to be me doing stuff online because that is life right now. San Diego was just canceled yesterday. That's a trip. It's a complete trip that that happened, but it did, and that's where we're at, so. So no cons coming up. We'll see if any of the cons I had scheduled for this year end up happening. They, it's not looking great, but we'll see. Maybe eventually I'll have upcoming events to tell you about. Oh, look at that. Now we got that nice little vignette going on. So you can see how it kind of like frames him. And also because I did the scumbly vignette kind of helps show the distress. All right. So that is pretty much going to do it for today. I started with just pencils and we've gone to the point where we've got the nib inking done on two of these panels. Uh, this one doesn't even have any nib inking. This doesn't have much left. Really this up here at the top is the only thing that still needs a ways to go, but I'm pretty much done with the work on that. So it shouldn't take me too much longer. So thanks everybody for coming and hanging out with me this afternoon and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.